Hi there. Um, thank you for your patience. Firstly, I wanted to apologize for not being able to make it to our members call. I was so upset that I couldn't be there and so upset that I had to postpone. I really, really, really was looking forward to it. Um, hopefully you received the email. And then I found out that some of you didn't actually get the email to say that we're postponing, which is even worse. So I really do apologize for that. Um, if you didn't get the email, I um, put my ribs out. <laughs> and then on the same day, got an eye infection. So my eye was like this big and I had this headache that went with it, but I couldn't barely breathe. So I was just in not a great space. I'm much, much better now. You can see I've got my little, you know, collar on. So I'm definitely on the mend and feeling a lot better. So I wanted to just um, tune in with you as promised and give you some of the key points that I wanted to give to you in that call because I know that most people are in some form of lockdown or restriction at the moment and that's the biggest issue here is that you know our love lives your relationship life your love life is being terribly affected by our current pandemic um, and I wanted to give you some tips on how to be with that because it's true that the majority of people are finding that this pandemic is really um, negatively affecting their love lives and it's understandable um, for single people and if you're in a relationship clearly if you're a single I mean a lot of the women that um, I've been speaking with and that have been coming to me are, are really getting fatigued by this um, you know maybe you're you know at an age where meeting the right person is really important to you because you want to start to plan your future maybe you want to have a family and you know, every day, week, month, and year now that goes by where you're, you know, um, unable to meet up with people is a day and a week and a year that ticks by and takes away your possibility of having that dream. That's devastating. And you would be completely, um, it would be completely understandable for you to be feeling extremely stressed by that. So first of all, I want you to know that I see you and I hear you if you're feeling that. Um, and then if you're in a relationship, that's tough too. You know, let's say you're the best case scenario is that your relationship's wonderful and great. And then you're in lockdown and all of a sudden you're stressing out. You're at each other's throats. Your doubts come to the surface. You're not sure if you really want to be in this relationship. And the worst case scenario is that you already were at that place and being in lockdown, it makes just compounds it all. And then you just don't know. It's really difficult to get perspective. You start wanting and needing everything from that one person. And, you know, things that were already there become extremely magnified. But then there's things that perhaps weren't there before that start to sort of fabricate because when you're in a, a, a very stressful situation, then it can create issues that aren't always there. So that's a, such a strain on a relationship and so many people are feeling that. There's a lot of people who are separating because of the situation. So I want you to know that I hear you and that I see you and it is a really hard time. First thing I want you to do is to recognize that and tell yourself that to let yourself off the hook. This is a freaking hard time. It would be fine to say, well, let's just put relationships on hold for a year or two, but that doesn't work. You know, the heart doesn't understand putting being put on hold. And at the end of the day, you know, all you, we've got through this time is our health and our relationships, our love, our connection. It's, it's really one of the most important things. So putting it on hold is not an option, right? So excuse me for being a bit stiff. This is just me in recovery. So let me speak firstly to those of you who are single and some tips for getting through. Now, as I mentioned earlier or in my email uh, that some of you got, um, a lot of people who are single are finding this extremely difficult, like I just mentioned now, but there are some who are thriving and I want to tell you why they're thriving. There's a couple of things that you can do. You, well, the first thing is you need to adapt. You know, those who survive, it, it, the saying used to be, it's the survival of the fittest. But where this is being rapidly changed now to, you know, there's a general consensus that the real saying should be, it's the survival of the most adaptable. And so for my single friends, um, it's about adapting. So no, you're not going to be meeting people up and going for dinners and so on and so forth. 
And no, you're not going to be in your best, at your best self at the moment. So we need to take that into account. What I recommend doing is being on dating apps. Now, some people have aversion to that, but now is the time to be on dating apps. But you need to use it in a particular way. You need to give yourself a particular amount of time each day to look at the apps. Otherwise, it becomes an obsession and we're looking for a dopamine hit. And when we don't get it, we can be spun into a bit of a depression. So you need to give yourself times of the day. I recommend like a 10 a.m. and maybe a 4 p.m. Not right before bed because that can actually affect your sleep and sleep right now is really important. So choose two times of the day where you check in and, and check messages and get back to people. I recommend 10 and 4. They seem to be good times, but see what works for you. The other thing is to take the pressure off. You're not looking for your partner right now, although that's always a possibility, but it doesn't ha you don't have to know right now. In this circumstance, it's going to be very difficult to. So take the pressure off and instead let this app dating, communicating, be about having fun and practicing your flirtatious skills. This way, you're going to be enjoying yourself and making some connections with people and giving yourself some fun in a, at a much needed time. The next thing to do is to know that yes, you actually can go on dates so long as you're within the, if you're in lockdown, if you're in the same area, I think, you know, it depends where you live. Some, some places it's 5K, some places it's 10K. You can go for a walk with this person and that's great. But know that the longer we are only allowed to do that, the harder it is to let the connection deepen and broaden. But you need to know that and you need to allow that to be the case. So ultimately you want to keep dating on apps as much as you can. And if you get a good connection with somebody, then definitely go to video chatting. Video dates are great. The other thing is to make sure that you are chatting with more than one person at a time. That's essential because in a regular uh, life uh, situation, if you were chatting with or dating one person, it's gonna keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. But in these circumstances, that's gonna take a little bit longer. So what you want to focus on instead is being broader and broader and broader. This is gonna help your mind to stay healthy and your heart to stay happy. So keep going, don't give up because that's depressing. Make sure you keep chatting with people and keep flirting on the apps. And in the same time, if you feel like you need a break, take a break. If you're starting to take it too seriously, take a break. That's okay too. A day off a week is really advisable. And even sometimes you might want to take a few days off if you find it's just kind of getting to you. Then the people who are in relationship, I see you. Um, it's tough, I know. So I want to speak firstly to those people who were in a relationship in lockdown where it was already stressful and you were already doubting whether the relationship was going to work or not. This time is going to magnify all of those issues. So you need to let yourself know that you need to give yourself a break. And some of the ways to work with that is going to be very similar to those people who are in relationship that there weren't issues initially. So if that's you, for uh, if you're a person in a relationship in lockdown and it was fine before you went into lockdown, but now you're feeling the stress and tension, what I'm about to say is going to relate to you as well. When you're living with somebody day in, day out, no matter how smart you are, no matter how much you do or don't love that person, they're going to piss you off and you're going to piss them off too. It's just going to happen because even if we were in a completely healthy um, time of this, of our world, being around somebody all the time, we project our own um, insecurities, our own um, annoyances onto that person. And when it's that one person that's in front of you all of the time, one little thing that they do that normally you'd get a break from or you'd get away from, it's there all the time. You know, for me, it's, it's chewing loudly. I hate it. <laughs> and so if that's in front of me day in, day out, if it's one day here or a bit here and then I go and have dinner with a friend or somebody else, it's fine. But when it's day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, every meal, every day, it becomes like a dripping tap and it will just be so blown out of proportion. So you need to know that that is happening. So what you need to make sure that you do is you need to diversify. You need to break it up a little bit. What that means is if you are in lockdown, that's like the, the most difficult situation, okay? But even if you have a lot of restrictions and you're not seeing other people very much, you need to see other people. So how do you do that? I know everybody's over Zoom, but you absolutely must Zoom or FaceTime at least one friend a week, at least. But ideally, 
once a day. The once a day can be a phone call, doesn't have to be on video. You need to be talking to other people because that's going to relieve some of the pressure and there's unseen pressures that you have on your relationship. It's just going to break that constant loop. There's like an unbroken loop that's going on between you and your partner. You need to break that. So absolutely once a week face-to-face uh, -face with somebody. You, If you can go for a walk with somebody, that's even better. But ideally, you're going to be speaking to a friend at least once a day. The other thing that you need to do if you can, if you have a space that's big enough, have your space in the house. So one room that's dedicated to you. So you can go in there and it's like you've got your own apartment. You know, and so you, that's your space. Your partner can't come in or vice versa. If you've got a big space and you can do that, both have your own room. But maybe you don't have a spare room, but maybe it's a little corner. It's a little nook and just set it up so that it's your sacred space and they can't come there. And, that, and you know, they're not even going to talk to you. They're not going to ask you a question. They're not going to say, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? No, the rules are there's no speaking to me when I'm in this space. They can send you a message. They can call you or they can wait until you get out and it's your choice. This gives you mental space, energetic space. I can tell you it's absolutely profound what it does for you. And the other thing is, this is for those of you who are in a relationship where um, it was fine before you went in. So if you already knew that this relationship is not working for you and you want to get out, it's a slightly different um slightly different but if for those of you who want the relationship to work and you're really trying to you know give it some breath while in lockdown or in restrictions you need to also have a date once a week at least and that date needs to be really specific not just oh do you want to hang out friday night no you need to talk to each other set a day and a time so let's say it's friday night 6 p.m. and make a date. What are we going to do? Okay, well, we're going to get some takeaway from this place and then we're going to have a bottle of wine and what are you going to do? Don't just watch a movie. The movie is the easy thing to do and I'm sure you're watching lots of movies anyway and that's fine. Now's not the time to cancel your Netflix subscription. But do something else. Maybe play a card game. Maybe play a board game. There's a really great couples game called Yum, Y-U-M, which was made by a really excellent couple here in Melbourne. And so that's one thing that you could do. Maybe you play Uno. Whatever it is, it needs to be something where you're able to have conversation as well. That's why I wanted to, to avoid have, uh, watching a movie. If you're open to it, it might be a massage night. So you give him a massage or he gives you a massage. It might be a romantic dinner where you light candles. Maybe you have a bath. There's so many ideas to have home dates and they're all over the internet at the moment too. So you can also Google that, but absolutely have a date once a week. It's essential. So these are some tips. There's, there's a lot more that you can do, but these are kind of like the basic guidelines and structure to how, for how to get through and not just get through, but to really thrive. Now I have some couples who followed these processes that have really begun to thrive. They started to talk in a way that they never spoke before. They started to listen in a way that they never listened before. And their relationship has a whole new breath of life that's been breathed into it. And those, I have some people who've been working with me who are single and following this, this process and actually having a hell of a lot of fun and really meeting some people. And because they're taking the pressure off, it's actually opening it up so that they can have um, a more enjoyable conversation, a more enjoyable connection without a lot of the pressure. So make sure that you stay with it you know just because the world has changed around us at the moment it doesn't mean that you can't have the love that you want it just means that you need to adapt and i really hope that these few little tips help you and that you get something from it and uh we will be joining uh, each other next month 100 percent for uh, a members call so please do make sure you send your questions to me and keep your eyes open in your inbox for the date and the link for that. It'll be sent to you really soon. And of course, if you have any questions, join the Physics of Love Facebook group. If you haven't done that yet, that's a private group for people that like to work with me. And you can ask me any questions in there and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you again for your understanding, for your patience and good luck. You can do this. You know, love is too important to give up on it just because of a little old pandemic. Sending love to you all. Bye.